Welcome to Below the 49th, a perspective on my neighbor to the south, Below the 49th. I'm Michael A. Sherbaum. Today's title, Big Apple's National Bite. As New York City begins a mayoral election, it begs the question, will New York's choice be a barometer or an indicator of America's opinion of woke cancel culture fueled by defund the police? Will their mayoral decision signal the awakening of the American voter who just woke up? Since 2020, New York City lost 1,800 police officers as a current mayor defunded the police to the tune of a billion bucks, plunging the city into a crime wave and a homeless crisis, a crisis that chokes municipal buildings and subways with horrific crime stats, daylight shootings, and even rapes are the reality. While loosening, the whole time on suspects charged and the complete loss of control over criminals and roaming gangs. Yeah, you got arrested and then, well, we'll just release them, right? You know, just a little looting, a little fire, a little robbery. We'll just let that go because they need to vent. They need to vent their social anger. It's a form of reparations for years of discrimination, don't you know? But the left persists in their excuses for crime. It's the desperation of a pandemic and social injustice reactiveness. What a word. Like the former Sex in the City star, I'll just call her by her character name, Miranda. She's running for New York governor, don't you know? This is where the left's law and order mindset is in a New York place. Miranda states in a tweet, shoplifters should not be prosecuted, thereby encouraging more lawlessness in the already crime-ridden New York City. <clears throat> I guess store owners are just expected to give out free stuff to shoplifters now. Yeah, yeah, that's a great business plan. You know, that's why one in three urban neighborhoods are described as pharmacy deserts, where national drugstore chains are not reopening or closing down pharmacies in urban districts, where last summer's riots occurred. So why would you think that would happen, you wonder? Shoplifting, fires, looting, the complete destruction of a business? Do you think? And that horrible fact disproportionately affects, ready for this, guys? Ding, 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 ding. Urban communities. No. Yeah. Where pharmacies give out COVID shots, urban communities have to take a bus or drive to get to a pharmacy. Never mind trying to fulfill their scripts. These communities then have less cops who patrol less crime-ridden areas and only respond to active crime calls where gangs and guns now become the law of the street. Guess what that describes? George Floyd Square in Minneapolis. Really? This is the cause and effect of defund the police. And now many in New York's urban community, the brownstone neighborhoods and the condo elite, they've had it. When a New York police officer was killed in the line of duty, uniformed officers formed a double blue line of respect. When the mayor came to pay his respects, every officer turned their back on him. What a sight. What a clear indication that the rank and file think that de Bozo has destroyed the New York they knew and loved. So I reached out to one of my longtime business friends who lives in New York. This guy's an authentic slice of New York City. He's lived and worked all over the, all over the place, really. He still thinks I can't say the word dog. Michael, it's dog. This guy tells it straight and with a strong opinion. But would you expect really anything different from a real New Yorker? I love this guy. So he tells me, New Yorkers are afraid. They see the sad deterioration of our city. We see these hoodlums praying and roaming the streets unchallenged. Michael, my neighborhood's uh, telling me that they're afraid. They're even afraid to take their dog for a walk. Their cars get broken into. Things are really, really bad. I won't even invite my sister to come and visit me now. It's like back in the 70s. Whoa, the 70s. That was some time of New York's darkest days, really, where gangs, crimes, and homelessness made people afraid to visit New York. Sound familiar? Then, finally, several law and order mayors came in and cleaned house. They reinforced the police, cleaned the homeless off the street, and brought back the luster and glory of New York as a safe, fun place that Americans want to bring their families to and visit. Yes, there was the bad taste of stop and frisk, but the reality, guys, was it took thousands of guns off the street and made a huge difference as shootings and gangs lost their grip and cops were confident in being proactive and people were pro-police. 
Tourists came back, really? They fed Broadway and supported a vibrant shopping and restaurant community. Today, that New York groove, as Kiss called it in their song, it's gone. As they are not as they were. And New Yorkers know it, they see it, and they live it. So, will the New York mayoral race represent the canary in the coal mine of political backlash? Consider the cities who adopted the defund police mantra. Have they improved or at minimum maintained their safety and attractiveness? No. The reality, things are worse much worse. Those cities must give quick comfort to attract tourism and investment just to come back, just to survive, never mind grow. So out of the 15 New York mayoral contenders, I see five front runners. The first, an African-American former NYPD detective for some 25 years who promises a return to law and order. His current TV commercial shows him authentically tearing up as he witnesses his city in ruin. For me, this guy checks all the boxes uh, in his attempt to reverse the devastation and destruction that the current mayor created. The second, the founder of the Guardian Angels. Now that resume speaks for itself, all about respecting New York and its people. This is a person who for years protected New Yorkers, literally walking the streets he lives and works in. Third, a former blue presidential candidate in the 2020 primary. This Asian American has some interesting financial lefty ideas, like a universal income, $1,000 for everyone. Oh, and limiting late night snacks. <clears throat> I'm gonna choke. He wasn't taken seriously in the presidential primary and by some New Yorker standards, a waste of time and as an also ran. Fourth, a Dominican Republic taxi driver who headed the New York Taxi Union. A visible minority, media activist, a star. He's all about law and order. This guy's the real deal. He's a dream. He has a slight shot, but may not get the Wall Street endorsement. And fifth, an African-American social justice professional at an urban policy school. She positioned herself as a, you ready for this? An avatar for addressing the city's racial and economic inequities. As of late, she was endorsed by a certain liberal New York squad member. Good luck on that. Now she may appeal to some urban voters, but respectfully, the New York urban voter is the one disproportionately affected by crime statistics created by change culture. Now consider that all these candidates, they're really a distillation of the new American political landscape. Two African Americans, one woman, one man an Asian American, one Caucasian, and a former Dominican Republic taxi driver who made his success driving hack in New York. Three are strong law and order, fund the police focused kind of restoring the New York back to safety and tourism people, while the other two are left, less concerned with police and more concerned with social reform. But America is giving some hints of change. Lately, New York schwanky, schwanky private schools, you know, the over 56 grand a year exclusive schools, they tried to teach the critical race theory to Richie Rich. Well, they received quite the huge public backlash from both the teachers and parents. Strong blue border cities have now elected law and order red mayors in commanding numbers. That's the Hispanic vote, don't you know, hello? Even blue mayors, ready for this, blue mayors, are going on TV telling the giggling never been to the board of VP that it's a crisis. Really, it's a crisis. End of the year, an embedded two million illegal aliens. It's a crisis. Ugh. So New York must bring back the old lady to her glory. And the familiar elixir is a regular remedy. And you know what that is? Law and order and fund the police. For New York, it will take some time to clean up the mess the left left. But New Yorkers, they're survivors. And as I predict, the, the ex-cop guy, he's going to win. And I, for one, will visit New York again, as it truly is one of the world's most exciting and vibrant cities. You will come out of this. Finally, please chick, uh, click and share. If you do, kindly subscribe. If you leave a comment, I try to answer everyone. Dog. I thank you for those considerations, and until next time, God bless and stay safe. I'm Michael A. Charbon for Below the 49th.